source of a lot of our values um, and what that looks like. And so human dignity, creation, care, and spiritual formation are our three values has really, um, has actually really rooted us even further in these values. And particularly as we are looking at prioritizing um, human dignity and protecting the vulnerable and thinking about everyone and including everyone um, in what we do here, um, these values are really driving that. I'll talk a little bit more about what creation care is looking like around here. And then, of course, spiritual formation and camp really being the main um, hub of our spiritual formation here at Ascension School. So um, I'm going to start with, with talking about creation care with you guys. Most of you know that we um, turned over about 80 acres of our land um, this last year to the CREP program with the federal government. That is the Conservation Resource Enhancement Program. This is to restore riparian zone. So that's the stream bed. And so um, this is pretty intense. It involves a a contract that we have to restore the land to its native habitat. And so one of the first steps we took in that was we hired our habitat manager. So many of you might know Bobby. He was our maintenance director and has been around Ascension School since he was a kid. <laughs> and uh, since he went to camp. And um, he is now our habitat manager and is overseeing our, um, really the restoration of the land. It's a really special job that he has, it's hard. He's been working very diligently um, in the fall and in, through the winter and into the spring. And the landscape is changing a bit. This photo you're seeing on the PowerPoint is the land actually being um, seeded with native grasses. And here you'll see um, the tractor again is seeding. This is a, one of our neighbors let us borrow his tractor. And then we had a volunteer uh, seed the land. And this middle photo that you're seeing is actually the native grass beginning to grow, just taken about a month ago. And as I'm looking, I'm looking out the window over here and it looks like a meadow out there. It's beautiful. I can't wait for you all to come and see it. This photo on the left is actually a bat box up here on this telephone pole. You can see it has the bat symbol if you look really closely. <laughs> so Bobby and Jason have been putting up bat boxes and building different things for wildlife habitats. If you look in the photo um, with the bat box in the background, you can see the stream has um, meandered out of the ditch and is now, um, it's just beautiful. The riparian zone is spreading. Um, the birds are everywhere. It's gorgeous. So we look forward to having you come and and walk the land. A group of our neighbors and um, friends of the trail planting wapato, which is a high protein kind of um, root vegetable kind of that um, is a native food to indigenous people. And so they're planting here. And um, the wapato actually began to grow this last week. It's popping out of the, the marsh area. Here's another native plant. Um, just, you know, these are being transplanted into the stream bed um, and growing, taking root and growing. Everything is just multiplying. Bobby is doing a lot of the um, propagation of the plants himself, which is a real blessing that we have someone who knows how to do that so that we do not have to pay to buy plants. Um, because we, we are in a cost share program, but it does come at a cost to us. Um, let me see here. I want to go over just to, to kind of tell you a little bit about our partners. Um, 
I already mentioned to you that this is a this second one here. We we are in partnership with the NRCS and the USDA, um, and through the Farm Bill. Um, so that is it is a partner in that it it is a source of significant funding and accountability for the restoration project. Um, we also are very much supported by the diocese. It's this Bishop, Bishop Pat, Pat's dream. Actually, it was a um, it was something that Rusty even in dreamt about having a trail out on that property. So um, we have Friends of the Trail, which is a if you go on our website, you can find the option to give regularly to our trail project um, to supporting the habitat. And we also received the Episcopal Church's Creation Care Grant through their Creation Care Task Force this year. So that's a, amazing. It's a $13,000 grant to help um, fund the project. We received the Wild Horse Foundation Grant for almost $15,000 and are in partnership with the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation. Um, and this takes in the takes the form of m many things. Um, you know, they are partnering with us in the hydrolo hydrology studies, in what kinds of plants to be reintroduced, and a lot of this is because of Bobby. Um, Bobby is a member of the tribe and um, is really able to work closely with the goals of the tribe in the habitat restoration. Obviously, there's a significant racial reconciliation element to this project because we are ha we are occupying the um, the native lands of our indigenous um, ancestors, and so you know we um, we're looking at what it means to restore the land um, and restore our relationship with our native um, Native American brothers and sisters. So our neighbors are our partners, obviously. They walk the trail, they pick up the garbage, they pull the weeds, they, um, you know, love this and they're so excited. It's almost like we have a park in Cove and we don't have a park in Cove besides this. So we're also really lucky that our native plant nurseries right here in Cove are so supportive, giving us, let, allowing us to use their greenhouse space to propagate and also gifting us um, plants. So um, I just, I like to share about these partnerships because it's just so profound um, how, the, how broad the impact is and what it means for our community um, to be doing this project. So let me see here. I'm going to show you this is our trail here on the left you can see um, is our map there is a welcome center now um, down near the entrance by Kimsey Commons and so that has this map nice and blown up for our visitors um, with our kind of guidelines for the trail um, this is the roller that we used Bishop Pat actually rolled the trail for us and we're chipping the the trees that we're pruning we're chipping so that they can the trail is now being um it has wood chips on it so that's really nice it's nice and walkable so i'm wondering if um if anybody has any questions pertaining to the trail at all You're welcome to shoot me an email if you do, or if you have any questions about supporting it in any way. Um, I'd love to share more on that um, with anyone. It's one of my favorite things about Ascension. Amy, I'm, yeah. really, I'm really impressed with all your partnerships. I just thank you so much for doing this. This is fabulous. Amy, I, I really, I, I echo what Marie just said. I think this is, unbelievable we my wife and i paul and i were just sitting here talking about how wonderful it is and then my 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 crazy dad granddad hackles kind of got up in the back of my neck for a second have you given any consideration to what the perimeter security for the school will be based upon the fact that you now back up to this kind of unprotected territory 
Mm -hmm. So there's actually signage um, that is placed on the property and we're kind of training our community to stay off our main campus. Um, and we're doing some kind of natural barriers like giant boulders and some good um, big trees and things like that. So, and we have very specific access points for the trail, which helps a lot. Yeah, it's, it'll be, um, there's a little bit of a risk management thing with it that we're navigating. So it's a pretty big deal. And if you guys, you know, when you're here, if you see Bobby, you know, he, he is that habitat manager and he's really the force behind this. We kind of get to just watch it happen before our eyes in many ways at this point. So please uh, talk to him more if you see him, um, reach out to him on Facebook. It's, it, um, it's a great source of information about what specifically is happening. It's, a, it's quite the art. So I think I'll kind of... Um, uh, real quick question. Mm -hmm. when, is Kim, when is Kimsey Commons going to open? Oh, uh, Kimsey Commons will open to rental groups beginning June 1st. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll talk a little bit more about like how our, um, you know, our COVID shutdown, what Union County is doing, how we're handling groups, that kind of thing. It's different um, than it normally has been. So kind of leading into that, you know, we have been very affected by the virus. We have been shut down since March, the beginning of March. As many of you know, we had to cancel our junior high retreat. We had we have high desert school for ministry that hasn't been able to take place. We had rental groups nearly every week since March that had to be canceled, which is um, over $25,000 in revenue. Um, from our rental stream, but um, we have been just being wise with our money, careful, um, applied for the PPP loan and received that, um, and have kind of been able to navigate that okay. You will be hearing from us over the next couple weeks with a specific appeal um, to sort of prop us up in this time and help us get through um, those, you know, how we've had that downtick in our, um, you know, even our outdoor school can't take place because that's partnership with the school. So, um, but we are doing things like the greenhouse is very abundant and that has allowed us to really think creatively about what what it means to fight food insecurity. Um, we've partnered with a local farm stand to supplement the farm stand um, through our greenhouse. This little guy picking vegetables, that's one of my kiddos. And he's, he was picking and we um, are giving to the food bank every week so that every family receives fresh vegetables. Um, and um, that's just really a blessing to be able to help in that way. Um, our, our greenhouse would normally supplement our kitchen, which we'll begin to do again in June. But, you know, we've been having vegetables for over a month now. So um, that's just one, one way that we've been able to think about what does it mean for us to be part of our community? Um, and I'm sure you guys are doing that as well in your community, but I think every um, ministry has to think strategically during this time and kind of pivot rapidly. What does it mean to be an impact to those that are right in front of you? So looking ahead, I'm gonna put up a picture of these adorable teenagers because we are at a very significant time in our history. Um, uh, you know, I don't think that Ascension School has ever missed a summer of camping in 100 years. And so, um, you know, this is a pretty big deal. But this um, last week, we did make the decision to cancel our 2020 camping season. I wanna share a little bit with you about why. Um, that email um, is going to be going out um, this afternoon and into tomorrow, kind of in tears with different folks being becoming aware. Um, 
we've been working very closely with our local health department with the CDC guidelines. And um, as it sounds like your newspaper came out and shared a little bit with, um, you know, what are these guidelines that camps are going to be having to, to abide by in order to have camp. We are certified through the ACA, which is the American Camping Association. That's a very important certification and we have to comply with the CDC, not just the government. Sometimes they don't align. So um, we, we and are of course more than happy to do so. So I want to give you some examples about why it would not be feasible. And for those of you who have spent time at Cove in the summer and have seen uh, what camp is like, you'll know right away why these things impact us. Um, communal spaces like dining halls, game rooms, chapels, and playgrounds need to be closed if at all possible. Um, singing together should be avoided. Um, Small groups of children need to stay together with one, uh, with specific leaders and not intermingle with other groups. Um, shared objects need to be avoided and disinfected between use. I just think about kids, <laughs> you know, and, and how they are. Um, so these restrictions and even just social distancing staff having to wear masks, um, things like you need, you, you need to stay local. Like you shouldn't be transporting kids from other regions. That's not an option for us. We do not exclude. Um, and we are fed from throughout Oregon and across state lines. So even this picture has kids from um, Washington State and Massachusetts. <laughs> you know, so just being aware that this impacts um, just way beyond our little town, right? Our little area. And you're in Bend. You wouldn't be able to send any of your kids to us. So we are canceling our 2020 season. But that's not going to stop us from doing ministry. I'm going to share a little bit with what we are going to do this summer. Um, Ascension School will be pro providing free lunches to all children in the city of Cove. Um, beginning on June 1st. Um, Ascension School will be offering a young adult internship in the month of July. It will be for anyone who's 18 years or older. You don't have to already be one of our counselors. It will be a paid internship and it will be about leadership development, spiritual formation, and the interns will also be producing camp content, which will take the form of what we're calling Camp in a Box, Every potential camper, uh, former camper, potential camper, every kid we can find <laughs> will be getting camp in a box, which will be like a care package that they receive at their home. They'll also be getting um, postcards, phone calls, and contacts with um, their camp friend, like their camp community. Um, we're also going to be um, producing some online content. We have decided not to do virtual camp, which is where you would put camp on, but you would have like a fee and kids get online and participate. Because of who we are and kind of our personality as a camp, we really felt like this was a bit of an antithesis to who we are. So, and, and really wasn't compatible with the demographics that we're working with. And perhaps some of you realize that because we are working with more um, risk populations that perhaps don't have internet service or access to like phones or computers wherever but we will produce some online content um, because counselors can do skits on <laughs> on social media um, so these are kind of this is where we're going we already have a lot of our um, counselors who have pivoted into this internship program and are brainstorming for our summer so that's exciting um, we in the email that I'm sending out to the community, to our co-community and our Ascension School community, it shares a little bit about grief for young people and how serious that is and um, how it can range from complete indifference, like I don't care, to total devastation. And so 
we're, I'm really hoping that we can walk alongside the kids the best that we can and keeping, keeping in touch with them and letting them know that we love them and we care and uh, helping them understand the why, but also just letting them be upset too. So, um, cause it is, it's upsetting. It's upsetting to all of us. Um, it's just the reality of what's going on right now. So that is, that is summer 2020. I do want to just leave a couple of moments for you guys to ask questions because obviously this impacts you as a community too. Is there anything I can answer? Amy, is there, uh, is there a plan to have a, a work session this summer? No, not at this time. Um, we are kind of, you know, drawing a distinction a bit between our rental groups because they sign a contract that also has a COVID-19 release and, and there's a little bit of a different kind of liability involved with rental groups. Um, Bishop Patton and, and um, the diocese, we're, we're just being careful about how, who we invite into the community um, and what we have in terms of our own programming. So we did cancel our labor of love weekend that we typically have. Our hope is to offer something perhaps in the fall. Um, but right now we are going to just be maybe working that, that we're going to be working those interns on some of those projects I had. <laughs> so, Amy, um, just a, a, a question. Have um, you given any uh, planning into iPads for some of the kids remotely? Um, I know that that's what, uh, like in Kirk County, um, I believe it was Facebook that donated enough money uh, to buy iPads for every child in uh, <coughs> uh, the school district, and they parked um, school buses with hotspots for internet service, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Facebook paid for it as a grant. Um, do this, uh, that electronic opportunity, because those kids, unfortunately, I think in most places when they have... Um, iPads uh, in the school, but they have to give them back at the end of the school year. So they yeah. don't have them in the summer. And are there ways to bridge that that um, would be helpful? Because we may be here for a while. Mm -hmm. that, um, that idea came up at both um, our camp, our, we have a camp committee and that camp committee brought that idea up as well. And um, that's something that I will definitely be talking with the Coke copy team on. I think that the, um, particularly Bob and Olin and Jenna would be the people who know the best. So we'll probably take their, as far as like the kids in Bend that we're working with, they would know, um, they would know what's the best thing we can do. So I'll probably follow their lead on how to navigate that technology access. So. Um, Amy, this is Marie. Um, can you tell me something about how the young interns would be protected um, if they come to Cove to work? And also, how, how would someone who's interested apply for that job? So the, the interns will follow the CDC guidelines that are set in place by our, um, you know, by the CDC, we will follow those guidelines for adult groups. So um, things like social distancing, they'll sleep in separate areas. Um, they will be here for four weeks. And so at, at a certain point, they will be out of the... Um, the air, like the five to 14 day window of symptoms showing. So that is really great too, um, as far as interacting with one another. We will be having them do like symptom checks before they arrive too. We will do like a health exam. So at that point they're quarantined here. So um, we're kind of relying on them quarantining at home and then arriving at camp, following social, social distancing measures until we are outside of the window. So, Celine? Um, in response to Paula's question, which was very right on, the problem that we see here now is that um, Deschutes County, where most of the kids that we send to Cove, they just have their school iPads, which of course get shut off now that school is over. So, and we'd, we haven't lucked out like 
crook has, because we don't have Facebook on our, within our county, <laughs> like they do over in Prineville. But anyway, so it makes it more difficult for us to do anything iPad-like because of the population of kids that we send. But there might be a way to work some of this out. And the Cove Copy team is meeting on Wednesday and um, we're gonna have a good conversation with Amy and Jenna and Bob and Olin and all the rest of the Cove Copy members like Terry and Marie and Chuck, because we know that our kids need something to do in the summer. There's no question about that. And their parents really need them out of their hair for some of the time. That's part of the gift of the Cove Copy Program. So um, we can't answer those questions yet, but don't worry, folks, we're working on it. We're gonna need your money. So if anybody wants to donate, we'll take it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Celine. <laughs> well, we've got about five minutes. Um, if anybody else has maybe one, one more question or so, if anyone has anything. I didn't hear an answer to the question about uh, how to apply for internship. Oh, yes, thank you for the reminder. All they need to do is go on our website and apply under a counselor tomorrow. That actual website, it will change and have the internship program on there. We just haven't really been. The counselors that already applied, it was built into their um, contract that they could opt into the internship if camp was canceled. But for new um, potentials, they would just go online and apply as if they were applying for as a counselor. And they would, you know, opt into the program. So. Amy, uh, Barbara here. Back mm -hmm. to the question of Kimsey Commons and when you're opening that in June, how are you going to approach that? So we have a limit on um, size of group. So our first group is actually a silent retreat and they don't actually talk to each other or stay in the same rooms or go near each other. So that's really convenient. Um, and then we'll be, uh, we will be welcoming back some of our small quilt groups. So they will just have to do social, just social distancing measures. Our kitchen completely changes, right? So Melanie has transformed how she will do, um, you know, no more buffets. There's just different kinds of things kind of will operate on as a restaurant would on that side. Um, so we're just following those guidelines. Some groups we just wouldn't be able to welcome because they would exceed the limits. Um, but, you know, Kim is working very specifically with all of the Ascension Radical Hospitality to reschedule and get people um, on board for next year if they have to. So um, we are, um, you know, through this season, we do count as a travel accommodation. So we have been able to kind of, you know, house some people in the local area who needed housing or had, you know, so that's, you know, we've had a little bit of income from Kimsey, but um, it's mostly just been closed. We're excited that people will be here again, even if we can't go near them. <laughs> Amy? Hmm? Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering how costs compare this summer between holding the regular camp session and doing your free lunch and your camp in a box and the internship. So, um, our budget is built with, right now, we've completely redone our budget. Um, we have eliminated our camp income, and but that did eliminate a lot of our camp expenses. And camp isn't exactly a moneymaker, so it's not a big loss in terms of that. We will be raising funds in our appeal over the next few weeks for camp in a box. So what we would normally raise for scholarships, we will raise for camp in a box. Um, and of course, you all will probably participate in that to some extent, right, for your Cove Copy Kids. Um, the, as far as the internship program goes, um, I am including them, and I did include them in the PPP loan because they are employees. So that's really great. Um, and they're going to work, so that's helpful. I'm actually going to be um, the main kind of speaker or a leader for the internship program. So that's nice to keep that in-house and not worry about bringing outside folks to campus. 
Um, but otherwise, you know, there, our biggest impact is that we do not have the rental income that we had before because that was what subsidizes everything else that we do. So, um, you know, you'll see that in our appeal that comes out is that we really have to up our contributions in order to make up for our rental loss. Give me a quick question. Mm -hmm. Are there groups that come from outside the area? So we are not accepting groups from highly, like we wouldn't, we wouldn't allow a group to come to us from like Seattle or something like that or, you know, so the groups are like local-ish, you know, from Eastern Oregon or counties that are not affected. Eastern Oregon is included. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is 9.40. I'm going to, you know, be kind of kind of strict here and say it's, it's time to end. I do want to say, as I said at the outset, and now you can confirm, isn't Amy amazing? <laughs> yes. Yay! Amy, bravo, bravo, Amy. Thank you. So we are well served indeed by having her as part of our team here in the Diocese of Eastern Oregon and specifically at Ascension School. But more broadly than Ascension School, she has uh, good input and good... Um, she works really well with Lisa and the others who are there all the time. So it's great to have you with us today. Thanks, Amy, for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you all for everything you do. Appreciate okay. it. Thanks, all right, I'm going to end this meeting so that when you go to coffee hour, it's there. And, and okay. Amy, we want to see you at coffee hour, please. Oh. Oh. Hi. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Sorry. I, it's, it's not our usual hospitality, Amy. I figured. No, you got to bring your own coffee and snacks. Bring your own coffee, whatever you're going to eat. <laughs> Go to church and then we come back to the coffee hour. <laughs> Thanks, Take care. I'll see you soon. <laughs>